Hey, Spuddies, Potatomic Whiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI. Today we're going to be playing as Germany, and we'll talk about Germany's bonuses and stuff here in a moment. Um, I do also want to address something. These episodes are going to be shorter than normal. I Since it is sort of coming up into Christmas time, I have less time to record, so there's going to be shorter episodes and potentially even maybe days where I don't release videos. I'll try to make sure there is none of those, but that's just something I want to put out there to make sure you guys know. Uh, we are playing with some mods today. We're just playing with the Eight Ages of Pace mod, which kind of rebalances how long it takes to get certain technologies and how fast cities grow and stuff like that. We're also playing with the Yet Not Another map pa Maps pack. We're playing on DD Standard Speed with 10 civilizations on the Terra YNAMP map, which is an Earth-like map. We are playing the Old World version where civilizations only spawn on Europe, Africa and Asia. And in order to settle a new world, you have to go find it. It looks like we have spawned in like where Turkey and Georgia and um, Armenia is sort of area, maybe a bit of Ukraine and stuff like that around here. Um, what else? Oh, yes. Let's talk about Germany's bonuses. So the first of Germany's bonuses is the Ad Holy Roman Emperor, which is an additional military policy slot, which is actually really good. The plus seven combat strength when attacking cities, which is really good if you can find city states early. We get the free imperial city. So each city can build an additional district, which is more than usual. So, for example, if you have a three pop city, you can usually, or four pop city, you can usually build two districts. Germany can build three. We also get the U boat, which is pretty much ignorable. And we get the Hansa, which is an amazing, amazing district because it is a half price industrial zone that gets adjacency from, gets two production from adjacent commercial hubs and plus one from all resources, which is amazing. But it doesn't get the adjacency from mines, which means mines are kind of less important as Germany. And then it gets the standard district adjacency bonuses. It's a really, really, really cool district. So, uh, awkward positioning to start here. We have no production tiles whatsoever, like none. Which is going to make this start really, really awkward. I, I, I feel like I can't settle on the hill. We also have no rivers, which makes our Hansa diamonds weaker. Uh, this is actually a really awkward start. Listen, <laughs> okay? I don't normally do this, but that was just so terrible a start that I felt like I had to re-roll that, okay? Almost, I almost never, never re-roll, but I just, looking at that start, there was no production. So that was, on Deity, on Deity it's different. You need at least like a two production tile to work from turn one, or it's just... Whew, it's gonna be rough for you if you don't if you don't have at least two production to work from turn one. It's gonna be rough for you. Your task is to forge the independent states that surround. It's a certain certain starts are not viable. That was way too much flat land. Not even forest to chop. I think there was like two forests. Okay, what is this madness? Okay, this is definitely a re-roll as well. Ah, uh, this is definitely not a good spot for me to start in. Uh, that was, that looks like it was clearly a, some sort of bug spawn, I don't know, so we'll restart that again. Let's see if we can get like an actual proper start here. Normally I would do my, as, normally I would do the selection of my spawning location off screen, but uh, just for some reason I completely forgot to do that today, so now you're getting to see the process of me looking for a start. That one there, that one there that we just got was clearly a bug because we were like, we spawned on snow and no civilization is supposed to spawn on snow. Okay, this is much more reasonable. Looks like we spawned maybe in... Philippines? Indonesia kind of area, it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna move here, settle here, and then I'll be able to buy those gems early. We're going to move there. We'll settle on this. It moves me away from these crabs and stuff, but that's fine. It moves me closer to the fish. So we're going to be able to buy these gems relatively early into the game. It does delay us by a turn, but that's fine. Let's move up this way. This could also be Korea, maybe. Could be. Um, so two food, one production is not ideal, but we will be able to purchase this tile here in the not too distant future. I think as Germany, it's important to get a scout to be able to find city-states in case you want to conquer some. So we're going to grab a scout early. 
I think we're also going to want fishing boats early. We're going to want to be able to chop this jungle out. A lot of no production tiles in here. So we're going to want to get fast settlers. Hmm. Bit awkward positioning here for any Hansa shenanigans that I wanted to do. I could do commercial hub, Hansa, Hansa, commercial hub, and then have a city over here maybe or something. But yeah, I want a Hansa diamond in around here. That's going to be important. So we want to get the Hansa unlocked pretty early. I think we'll go ahead and we'll pick up. The big one here is probably going to be sailing. I think sailing is going to be making a lot of sense here at this, this sort of start location. Picking up sailing early. Okay, there is a goody hut that we will get. There's also horses up here. That's actually a reasonably good strategic resource. Oh, and we got a scout. I think I will finish this scout because I've invested into it now and I feel like I need to finish things that I've invested into. Even if its value is diminished by me getting this, I can actually pull you back maybe a little bit. We'll see. I'll let you explore a little bit and then I'll pull you back. I just really want to figure out where I am in the world. Okay, this looks like it might be India. Okay, I did randomize the location of where natural wonders spawn because normally Mount Kilimanjaro would be over here, I believe it is. Around here somewhere. Okay, we have reasonable isolation. There's nobody on our doorstep, it looks like. So we should have time to maybe get a bit of stuff done before we have to go to war with somebody defensively. We need to start thinking about defensive locations. Oh, wow, you really, really you spawned there. That's a very aggravating position for that guy to spawn. Because he's going to spot my city now and then spawn a bunch of units. Okay. So, yep, work that mine. And I think immediately we're going to be going for settlers here. Uh, on Didi, getting settlers out is the number one priority. There is no priority higher. Settlers are the number one thing, so I feel safe now. I don't think that guy found my city. That's fine. Okay, so the next move. Um, I have mining. I need to be able to chop jungle, but that's fine for now. Archers would be useful. I would also like to build my campuses. I might put a campus right there, I think, maybe. We'll see exactly how we play things out. Uh, for now, though, I'm going to... Short term, I think it would make sense to grab the ability to chop any forests or jungle because it'll just be handy if I need to get rid of some of these things. Let's move you over here. You should be able to take this on. Okay, there's another tribal village. We definitely want to pick that up. I may delay here and get the double, double experience on this guy. We'll see. Uh, you know what? I'll just pick it up in the hopes that it's something good. Now, I would like a Pantheon this game. I'm not sure what Pantheon I would get. Preferably something with production on it would be nice. Maybe plus 25% production towards your first district. Ooh, that would be a really nice Pantheon, actually, if I could get that as Germany. Okay, there is Pio Piatahi. There's a knowledge of astrology. Attack this, attack the scout. So I think we'll definitely be rush settling up here, probably on that tile there to get the gold and the, um, to get the gold and the culture from that. You fortify for a turn until we get the plus five combat strength locked in. Okay, there's the Aztecs. Now I'm going to want to send delegations to people in Deity because you need... You need to be on the good side of people because the DD AI, I've been playing around with them in this patch and they are way more aggressive, way more competent than I've ever seen them. In particular, if they have an early pathway to you, they can be very, very scary. It is not wisdom. So let's go ahead and pick up the extra things in here. I would like to get a thingy. 
We need to keep an eye on these guys so that we can pick up any of their settlers if they send some our way. Let's get foreign trade because we want to get craft uh, settlers out as fast as possible. Let's attack here. Okay, yes, we will be settling right here, I think. He spawned a settler. I'm going to have you heal over here. I would love to explore more, but I need to make sure he doesn't send any nasty stuff my way. This will not quite kill, so I'll heal for a turn, and then that should be a kill. So this is going to be a long walk for this settler. But it's going to be a worthwhile walk. So here's mines, quarries, and chopping of woods. Let's go ahead and pick up. Embarkation would maybe speed this up getting over here a little bit instead of having to go through all this terrain but I don't think I could get it quick enough I am gonna want to be able I am gonna want to get riding fairly early here yes Hong Kong and we were the first to find them that's actually really amazing being the first to find Hong Kong means that accelerates a lot of my it accelerates my capital in a big way for infrastructure in the not too distant future when we start building it okay so we cleared that barb camp we are going to need to build units here to dissuade the Aztecs from finding us and trying to kill us. Because once his scouts find me, I'm I'm in trouble. There's Catherine. Catherine, actually, I've played a couple of games with Catherine and she has started to get really aggressive, like really attacking people. Kind of really dangerously. She, she's she been doing these like horsemen and, and swordsman pushes on me that are really difficult to deal with. So we're going to pick this up, extra chunk of gold, that's actually potentially worthy of purchasing a trader once we get foreign trade. I could also get a builder. I can't chop the jungle. I'll save up, maybe I could purchase a settler actually, I usually don't do that. I have battle cry now. Okay, I'm, I want to keep an eye on this scout, because okay, so he's, he's definitely going to find me. And that means I need to build units to dissuade him from attacking me. France is far enough away that I'm not super concerned. Aztecs is really close though. In fact, I may, even though I want to settle over here as soon as possible, I may forward settle them to get a good blocker city in here. Like maybe settle right there, drop an encampment there. And then I'll have like really good angles of defense through these passes. I actually think that's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. As far as settler map goes, I think I want to settle here too, so that this city can create a Hansa diamond with the capital. And then if I'm settling here, that kind of, ugh, that kind of blocks me from making a diamond with, with this city and another city. So this is like a purely defensive city if I put it right there. I could put a, I think I'll put a city on the dies as well and then I'll have a really defensive city in here too to protect myself from the Aztecs advances. Also, I'm hoping that the chain of the chains of islands to the east here are kind of uninhabited. Let's get a little bit more scouting information over there. Okay, we were not the first to find Hattusa. What's your mission? Train a spearman. Um I think that's actually worth the plus 2 science per turn. We'll consider when we do that. So yeah, I think we're going to first settle here. We're going to grab the monument now so that we can get to early empire faster. And we're getting the plus two production from Hong Kong. So it looks like he actually didn't find me yet. He know he might know to, he hasn't found my city yet, which is a good defense. Once they find your city, Okay, he didn't find my city, so that's good. He will see me settle over here, though. Which is scary. I'm going to want to pick up bronze working if I can. Ooh, tribal village. Go get that. Did you come up this way? Just fog bust for me. For the settler. So as I said, my plan here is to get a city down. Get a city down there to defend myself. Put an encampment here. 
And just the city's goal is just to get walls and encampments here to provide a defensive line against the Aztecs. And then I want to get a city over there. I want to get a city one, two, three right here, I think, to be able to Hansa Diamond with my capital. Oh, that's really awkward. I would love to... properly Hansa Diamond with this city, but I might be able to just do a half a Hansa Diamond and then have the horses, because you can't harvest horses. So I could do another Hansa Diamond over here if I settle on this tile. Oh, this is too close. No, it's all falling apart. If only I... No! Okay, let's change a plan then. Let's see here. I could settle here. And then on the citrus. I could settle on the citrus. Okay. Let's see, right. So that would be one, two, three. I could settle on the rice. And on the citrus. That still blocks this. God damn it. I guess I can't settle on the dyes, so that's going to be fine. Well, the goal of this city was to actually connect up with this one, right? So what if... Oh, I'm not going to be able to get a good diamond unless I, unless I do a triple. This city's just not going to get a good Hansa diamond unless I do... But I could get a really amazing triple diamond if I settled over here. I could do like triple Hansas and then commercial hubs on each each side. Each wing would have its own commercial hub. We could do the super diamond. I was hoping to put it here. But... Mm, is it worth it to do the big triple diamond? I don't know if it is. It's a lot of fun to do. But is it good? It means I get an adjacency from... One, two, three, four. They get plus two from adjacency, plus four from these. So it would be a baseline of plus four production in each Hansa. Which would be modulated up to... Up to, um... Up to eight when I get that card that gives me adjacency bonuses. It's at guilds, I think. I think it's called, like, Craftsman or something. Where is it? Yeah, here, Craftsman. 100% Industrial Zone adjacency bonuses. Uh, do we go for the diamond? Play. Well, if we move the diamond up this way, we could still do a diamond and then have these two cities do a half diamond. Ah, uh, you know what? We'll do the big diamond. Screw it. This city will just be a defensive city. We're going to pretty much want to work on these immediately, but I think we have time maybe to pick up archery. This city over here is going to do basically nothing but defend itself. So we're going to settle. I think we're going to settle on the oranges, as we talked about, and then we'll settle on the rice. And then we'll settle here. I think that's the spot. And then we'll settle here as well. Okay. And then there's probably another city up here at some point, but we haven't scouted that yet. So that would bring me up to one, two, three, four, five, six cities. That's about as compact as I can get them with the terrain that I have. So he seems pretty happy with me. Oh, I forgot to send a delegation to France. That's actually really bad. She's going to be upset with me now. Yeah. I did get one with the Aztecs, so he should be fairly happy with me. So he's going to know where I am, so I don't need to hide it anymore. Okay, we got some faith. That's actually really good. I might even swap in the... I would be tempted to swap in the faith pantheon if I knew it was going to end soon, but... 
There's Carthage. Carthage is actually really good too. Choose Civic here. I'm going to be going for, yeah, again, settle. Just settle as early and as hard as possible. But in the meantime, we're going to be making units to try and compensate for... Um, so he sent me a gift. That means he's currently, he's currently mildly in my favor, which is good. Yeah, so he's, he's happy about the luxuries, but once I start picking up some of these other luxuries, um, that friendliness is going to wane. Also, there's Rome. Interestingly, we haven't actually met them. So let's fortify in position here. We'll move up this way. I need to scout this area over here, actually. So there's Trajan himself, the glorious, the beautiful, the handsome. <laughs> Imperator Caesar Trajan of the far-reaching Rome. Okay, it's an honor to meet you. Would love to sample your hospitality. Hospitality? God damn, I say that wrong every time. So, settle in place. We'll delete the pin now. So there's Magdeburg. So this city's going to basically produce units for me. And I should have actually switched this over to um, galley production. I'll pay the 25 gold, although that could have been a settler. Let's see. No buildings in particular stick out to me. We'll leave things the way they are, although I would like to work this for the faith so that I could get a pantheon for the extra for district production. So I tell you what we will do. I'll grab a builder. Man, should I grab a builder? I don't think I should. I think I should just maybe purchase a trader, trade with him, see what we can do. Okay, I do want to get more information about Roman stuff. Apologies, yeah. So he's a bit upset that I settled over here, but this is almost purely a defensive settle. We'll get a galley to be able to defend ourselves from the water. We've got a monument in the capital. Let's now work on... Um, more settlers, I think. Yeah, we have really terrible production in my capital, which is really holding me back. So I may trade internally here for the extra production because that'll shave three turns off my settler. That's just how bad my production is right now. One of the things I was actually tempted to change in my, my mod, my potato mod that I'm building, is I was going to change this card from plus 50% production towards settlers to plus 2% um, two produ two percent production, plus 2 production to base production and then like plus 30% production or so something along those lines so that Roughly, it would equalize to um, around 10, having around 10 production. Because I think 10 production is a reasonable amount to expect to want to have in your city before you start building settlers. We did get a pretty bad capital. And that's definitely holding us back a little bit. We got animal husbandry and we want to pick up archery. We want to get archers out if we can. Doing some scouting in here. So he has a lot of cities, but he... Oh, I forgot to... Damn it, I forgot to send a delegation to Rome as well. Oh, I'm, I'm really messing up here. <laughs> Jesus. I swear, I usually don't make this many mistakes. So this settler wants to head over to this guy. Yeah, he's looking to declare war on me, so that's why I'm trying to get units out. I have a really, really poor production line in my capital. Yeah, he's getting ready to declare. Can we do a joint war? Okay, he doesn't want to go joint war. What about... Uh... 
He won't do a joint war with anyone, so yeah, he's clearly looking to attack me. I was hoping to maybe get him tied up in another war. Oh, no, no, his units moved back. How do you feel about giving me open borders? Okay, I'll take your open borders for one gold per turn. That should actually potentially... Make us more friendly too. If you head over this way. Come back this way. Yeah, I want to keep the Aztecs on my good side if I can, because they can... The Aztecs, particularly early game, particularly early game, they can be really aggressive and really dangerous. So, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to call this an end for this episode here. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Remember to leave a like if you want to directly support my channel. And remember to leave a comment if you want to give me your feedback. Other than that, though, I want to say I love you all very much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.